this space uh, on the main stage in the practice room that they have here. Like they were able to really kind of get their feet wet. And I'm hoping that they, everyone here is a lanimal. That's, right, kind of, yeah, that, that's right, what right, I'm hoping right, to see right. today. I want to, I want to, I want to yeah. see 20 animals here today. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, I'm so, so excited to like see the match and just really be interested in how a lot of these teams are going to be coming into the day. Once again, like we hamsters have, like, like, once again, we have like both hamsters versus elevated, and it's going to be very, very interesting to see how both of these teams are going to end up playing. I mean, once again, like the maps as well is something that we'll be happy to take a look at once we actually do end up bringing that up, which is right there. Hey, it's breach, breach, and hollows is what we are going to be looking at for the sort of match later out just for now. So. And you are going to be seeing different matches. I know previously all the showdowns from this point on, they have been predetermined maps going into every single round, but now we are now at LAN. It is a veto system, which is why you're going to see stuff like Breach Breach Hollows. You're going to see, right. you know, the teams that prefer certain maps are going to be clearly leaning in that direction with that Breach, the last map left after four cough maps were banned, and Breach and Hollows, the last two maps picked after four demo maps were banned as well. So there's still a holdover, but don't need to really worry too much about that one. But so we're going to be starting with these two teams, Hamsters, Elevate, and Elevate. I know it was a bit of a shift in the roster, I believe, coming here. Not every yeah. player, you know, was able to make it. So they had to pick up some players. But these are all people that me and you personally know from mm -hmm. our previous right, experience. Yeah. These are guys who have known each other for a while, with Icy kind of being a wild card mm -hmm. thrown into the mix for them. How, how do you think that's going to help them out here? I mean, starting on Breach, it, it is a map that definitely more figured out now. I think some teams really struggle to attack it. You you want that kind of level of coordination. Do you think that that previous experience maybe that they have could help yeah. them push through that? I think it's actually so important too to actually bring that up as well as like the implication that like Breach has really been a map that people have not only been favoring, but we've saw yeah. a lot of Breach played consistently, we right? Did. When we're looking at, when we're looking at the previous 10Ks, when we're looking at now here at LAN, a lot of the time Breach is something it is that you really have to keep in mind a map that can be very favor to the the better team quote unquote of course you can say that about any map right but 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 breach more than anything i, I feel like is important because we've seen but a i don't lot care if this is of, controversial well, i think the better team will usually win well yes but I mean, <laughs> like, okay yes but like allow me to explain myself at least a little bit the fact that it is that i'm bringing up with breach is, is more so just the fact that it's like there's been a lot of times where where matchup knowledge has not been as effective right. on or like on, on breach we've seen a lot of these teams really a lot of these teams a lot of these players be be used to playing on the map but not necessarily Necessarily knowing how to play it that well, mm -hmm. right? Like, like, like they're used to. Okay, like we know where it is. We can go. We can attack A side. We can attack B side. Most of the points of contention that you would expect, mostly mid, mostly A main, mostly B main, right? Like mm -hmm. when you're coming into that side, a lot of those angles are a lot of open, and a lot of, and and really something that is that you have to be more concerned about. So I definitely think that breach is one of those maps that I agree. Teams have been more used to you, more used to playing on, and just overall utilized a lot more frequently. I mentioned Anvil earlier, and now look, here he is, right? Like, and I guess this is the time to give you the perfect opportunity to talk about, like, the Anvil changes. Well, yeah, I mean, two shields, it's better than one. I mean, it's, right, it's really yeah. a simple way to say it, right? But it is just having the ability right. to place one early and then have one later for a post plant. You know, you can establish and hold space and then not necessarily give away the rest of the utility that Anvil brings to the table for you either way. We are going to see him on both sides here, of course, Saint and Dallas. Saint also getting a pretty mm -hmm. sizable, sizable change. Drones Agreed, a lot yeah. faster, more health on the players who get res, so you can kind of abuse that. Now we are seeing one mix, someone who was out of the picture for a long time. Mm -hmm. Now reintroducing himself, ready to fix some things up. Fixer also changes, not, I didn't think they were gonna be as big, and, and clearly they're not, because we're not seeing him on both sides. We're seeing the runway mirrored here from them. So that, you know, could give them an angle, could give them an advantage potentially against that anvil, mm -hmm. even though he has more shields. Now they have more mollies <laughs> to, to right. pressure it with the Dallas on their team. Literally one of the, the, the biggest characters that has been released in, in, in the recent year or two, right? Runway is definitely a conversational topic that a lot of teams find themselves talking about whether she is worth the pick, whether she is worth the ban. And we've gotten to the point now where absolutely, she is absolutely worth the pick. She's not yeah. picked ban, right? Because of the fact that it, it really does attribute a lot to the team that has her. And so with that being the case, we've seen teams lose primarily because of the fact of of the, the Molly speak a little bit extra to actually <laughs> utilize there. And I think that's what makes it so interesting. Yeah, and the hamsters on the left, they will be attacking first here, it looks like. Starting things over on A, and already trading some fire here, but just hidden gadgets and forced back at an early down from Delane as well onto Prosper. Prosper was a bit of a phenom early on, and then kind of not able to find his stride as much, but back here now at land with the rest of his boys, mm. but a pick already here. It's a one for one immediately, so three on three and early. 
answer back from Elevate, who have this, what I think is the advantageous defensive side. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, slow push. You having to push to a lot of their angles. You having to play it to a lot of their space. It's hard to sort of utilize. And of course, Anvil, being a character that is great post-plant, or at least trying to slowly make their way, I should say, at least to the objective. Not so great on the first initial attack. The first initial push can make it a, little, a lot harder to deal with, as we see. Icy has to try and see if he can make some sort of way into the objective here. Toss out the C4, manages to at least get one down. Anvil is still playing with fire here. There's still two members left on the red team here, but he is going to get swung. The fixer is there, and they are going to at least be able to provide themselves with a first round win here. No, names were actually flipped, actually. I saw it on the bottom with the blue, but it is Elevate that is going to be attacking here. So my mistake on that little bit of a flip, it is going to be cute ham uh, public hamsters, excuse me, on the defense. So they have the advantage side. This is definitely a way to get the ball rolling for them, especially going into this as what I would consider the favorites. I think it can help them fairly significantly there. And already saw a little bit of Anvil magic, buying that early C4 round number one. Clearly paying off with them getting one down from, from Skeppy, but not necessarily able to kind of roll it into more than that. I want to see how the Anvil kind of evolves in the later rounds as we get through here. But shifting the attack, I think that's the way to do it. If you messed up that one site, and you think they're going to think you're going back there, you can flip it up. They're going to go B, and it doesn't seem like there's too many defenders. There's one they're holding close. It looks like that is Ink with the rest of the team now rotating over. But they made it into site fairly cleanly, and that first shield can go down to get them a plan. Well, I was talking a little bit earlier about the the implication, or at least the, the perspective of people knowing how to play this map, but not being too aware of the sinful strategy. Of, this is what I mean. This site has really been a deciding factor between tiebreakers, between point leads, point differentials. It's always been something you've got to keep in mind, and this is looking great for red teams so far. Already plenty of kills available to him. Elevate having to back up, at least for the time being. Finding a couple open shots there. Snaps okay. his fingers and gets the reveal. They, he knows that one that's playing goes by. Ring around the Rosie is the game we're playing here. Not necessarily Rogue Company. As nobody's made it to the bomb yet. They have to worry about taking care of him. The bomb is way too open. They have to find it. They are going to make sure they double swing him. That is going to be the game already present for Red Team here. He was buying a good amount of time, but just not enough in the end. And they narrowly make it to yeah. that defuse in time. That is right on a razor's edge, but they will be able to get that one and get their second round in a row. Still, though, that was a close one. With that plant mm -hmm. down early, they were still able to execute well around it. They got into it quick. They held uh, their ground. Prosper, obviously, also staying alive for so long probably right. adds to that. And if he had taken one more person down, I think that could have been doable, but just forced to play that ring around the rose. He didn't have enough health, didn't have enough ammo when you have only that revolver in hand. Very difficult fight for him near the end. So advantage continues in favor of public hamsters as they're getting ready. Drop out of the airship here early. And I want to know what they'll do. They've, they've, they've messed up on both sides. I mean, they've mm -hmm. made it in on B, right. so maybe they will angle towards B again, but they have not been able to get a, a successful attack yet. But now they should have most of their primaries at this point, and they feel confident enough to make it back over to A. They, they think that maybe them getting the bomb down might force a pivot out of public hamsters, but seem indecisive as well. Prosper already made it up fairly far and probably gave them some key intel. So trying to find some sort of way, obviously, to make it on the side, just as you were mentioning before, Kresnik. Not necessarily the best sort of attack that we've seen so far, but they are up here once again. They have the intel now, though. With no anvil, this could be dangerous. He gets brought down wow. and taken out. I see already tries to swing a wide angle, but instead fights not one, but two members of the opposing side. The C4 will at least try and see if they can even those odds. But once again, Another one is already down on the side of public hamsters, making it that much harder for them to try and make it in. If they multi-swung here, it would be a problem, but it seems like they're trying to buy their time, really. They have to sort of just play around the bomb, play around the utility, or at least the the, the side, I should say, not necessarily the bomb, because Anvil still has it, but more so play around the side. They don't have to force anything. They want to make them as uncomfortable as possible, and that will be wow. the moment to strike. That is going to be another round in the books for Elevate here, 3-0. Uh, the public, oh, public, public hamsters, hamsters just public the flip hamsters, off the right, bottom, the but right. yeah, the aggression on defense really paid off near the very end for them, made them very uncomfortable on that push near, and again, didn't work, they tried to do a fake and a pivot, but it seemed like public hamsters just read it fairly well, which you'd expect from a team like them right. that have been playing for so long and have played so many different strats on so many different maps, they're going to be able to read that sort of situation. Going in here and looking at the scoreboard, Skeppy, no limbs, but it a couple downs, I mean, that is... You know, you're able to get that with anvils, either suppressing fire from the LMG or obviously with the C4, mm -hmm. as we got to see in round one. But now, back to the attacking perspective, back 
to Skeppy on this anvil. They are going to A. They will be committing this time. The bomb has made it at least into the initial, past the initial threshold and early damage. That could be something they push off if they just have to be aware of the players up top. Can they clear this at the same time? No, they're going to have to back off. Maybe bait some utility. I think that right. was the game plan there, but nothing really comes out very disciplined hold there from hamsters at the start now they slowly made their way up into the high ground they're at least forcing them back a little bit playing by staircase here the nades will be would have uh, been enough but the c4 is going to stop that in his track smoke's just trying to provide the utility but they already got the down they know where she's at they get her taken out of the fight here and so many oh. people <laughs> fall all at once hey that's just the better positioning i would have to say 4-0 yep. oh, so far and definitely, I agree with you. You were mentioning before about how it seemed to be a more defender-sided site, right? The fact that they have to play in so many different angles. We saw them make it up. We saw mm -hmm. them keep a little bit more pressure on the uh, on the opposition, right? They're attacking. They're moving in. Elevate being a little bit more aggressive. But at the end of the day, you still have to play into a lot of those open angles. Even by the stairs, it made that much harder. Why? Because you're still dealing with a choke point. You move by the firing range, or at least a little bit by the dummies, and you get C4. We saw it happen with the runway. It makes it difficult to make it onto site easier. And taking a look at the scoreboard here, lowest earner from Public Hamster is higher than the highest earner from Elevate. So a one-sided affair so far. But all they've done so far is secure themselves that that minor advantage. If Elevate comes back here, they could get a couple straight. They get one pick mm. off, but maybe a little overcommitted in the open. Was Icy there just trying to crawl away, but a great angle from Gronky will finish off that downed player. And they are just so confident. They are just running this in. Look at this angle. They're taking oh, this crossfire. Wow. Normally that pays off. Skeppy downs <laughs> one, but it means nothing in the yeah. grand scheme of things. A 5-0. Such a, a strong, aggressive play. And I think that just is their comfort here on Breach. Biggest thing it is that we've talked about time and time again, previous 10Ks, or even if you're looking at things right now, it's 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 a numbers differential, right? Anytime mm -hmm. we're talking about typical tactical shooters, 5v5, right? This is not your typical tactical shooter. It's 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 a 4v4. Yeah. It's played a lot differently. It's third person. And so with that being the case, not only do you have to take three peaks into consideration, but we're talking about a situation where there's only four of you. One of you goes down, Every number that numbers differential is big. That's huge. Mm -hmm. That's it's it's not typical. You don't have another man it is that you can fall back on. You have to be concerned about that. And so that's exactly what we saw. One of them gets taken out, the rest of them clean it up. One, one thing I will say here is just double checking the map veto rules. I believe this is Elevate's pick. Assuming, mm -hmm. assuming they are lower seated, which they may or may not be, assuming they're lower seated, this was their choice. So either they were not expecting public hamsters to be quite as strong on the defense here as they are, or they think their defense will be monumental mm -hmm. in response. See if that is the case, as they do get to get to the side. We are only two rounds away from halftime and from the flip. So we look at Icy trying to watch this middle area of the map. A much slower round here, I think, playing for picks, trying to punish that aggression, aggression oh, but wow. waiting a little bit too close. That's a double down C4, forced to crawl away, but there's fire in the way, and only one member of Elevate. Yeah, not, okay. going to be, yeah. <laughs> not going to be much time remaining for the blue team here. Elevate is not looking too good. You're talking about a 6-0 right now, not looking great. As we're almost into the next half, not a single bit mm -hmm. of mileage or inch, no leeway given to Elevate here. I wonder how many of them are actually going to have to play this. Maybe it's just the side. I mean, that, 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 like, whether that is the case or not, we are still talking about a 6 0 situation. Yeah. And if it does swap to half, you only have one more round for error. With, with, regardless of side, sidedness of a map, I mean, yeah. it shouldn't ever be going 7 0. I mean, maybe right. High Castle, <laughs> maybe High Castle goes that, 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 that distance and you can reliably come back from that once you get on the other side. But most of the time, it, it, uh, no map, no matter how sided it is, should go to this score line at half. So Elevate have to be feeling that pressure of making sure that does not happen as they set up for this. You can see the defensive hold here. APS fairly far back to stop any maybe deep utility, but that shield's already in the way, and you can already feel, I, I think, the, the ramifications of that an anvil buff, right? The fact that if you needed that for post plant, you would never put that shield exactly in that position right. so aggressively. If you felt like it was necessary for your post plant, if by doing that you make a sacrifice, and someone's already sacrificed here far forward, caught by the Semtex, that's more picks actually for Elevate here. They get another player down, but they have to bleed someone with that C4 to do it, but still the that's slow awesome. punishing play is working out for them. It is, and they're being a little bit too aggressive. I think now that Public Hamsters have sort of realized they need to play a little bit more back. They do manage 
actually get another one. This is a 2v2, though. This could be dangerous. Swings one and downs the other. He has to push him in this scenario. They actually managed to get each other picked back up. One by hand, the other by drone. That's going to be something that you got to be worried about. They get that kill. That will be the first point for Elevate right here. That will be one to six. That's how we're ending this half. We're heading into the next one right now. Two rounds of leeway, potentially. Well, really, one round of leeway. The second one won't even really matter because the game will be over by then. So it's definitely something you have to be worried about if you're looking at ele uh, Elevate's side. Yeah, they definitely have to be careful. And now we're seeing, actually, double fixer action. If these do get locked in, so runway, maybe not what they wanted, but one pivot already. What was the anvil is now the talon coming out from public hamsters. So want a little bit more of that intel for their attack, want to be able to kind of pick where they think the opening mm -hmm. is going to be. But it's a straight uh, flip from the side of Elevate, other than the Fixer, of course, right. coming out. But th those are, are locked in here now. Saints again kind of pushing Dahlia out. It, it was already happening. And then I think the further changes, I think, really exacerbated how far back she was by that point here. But I see Elevate players... Definitely got to find their yeah, yeah. <laughs> got to find their footing here and their their way to go in. You bounce between all of them. You can see they seem focused, if not a little, probably shaken by that half. We'll mm, see how they can yeah. go here. But uh, obviously feeling a little bit good about being here in the first place, and hopefully that energy will push them here. And our first look at public hamsters across the board for them. They are they are focused in because they know they have a good chance. Yeah. Uh, of taking this whole tournament. They got to keep this energy up, I think, if they want to keep it going, as we are going right back into round number eight. First round of the campsters attacking half, and we'll see if they can repeat the success from their defense. They are being a little bit more aggressive here. This time, they aren't affording any room whatsoever. They're just being aggressive. They're pushing up. What an angle for that fixer to be holding. He broke the he broke the window, but I don't think he was expecting him to be there that quick. They really have three men up and taking advantage of this high ground scenario. They've managed to down one and pushing it through the rest, using the smokes to play aggressively as Ooh. well. One of them by the stair, still not going to be able to find his shots, but they will be able to find the rest of the kills there. With that being the case, it's something that I will have to keep in mind. That much is for wow. sure the round is over the round is done that's going to be two to six making sure they counter out that aggression or oh, not, not counter out the aggression but counter out the sort of the the latter half of mm -hmm. the previous half's aggression bit of a tongue twister to make sure they can do that on the there. attacker side but we did get there yeah you're right it was a little bit of grade a5 walk you beat from the, from yeah. the same holding high ground <laughs> trying to find the player in the smoke with that dallas mm -hmm. reveal and i think that probably really flipped that Round around, I think, if that pick was found, maybe the, the team shot isn't necessarily there as much as it would have been otherwise, but rolling in a, a quick answer back by Elevate. And I think this puts them in a decent place for the following round, because they denied them a good amount of cash. They shouldn't be, be too loaded, really, heading in here, and we'll see where their defensive positions will be this time as we follow Icy, looking for, just watching mid, looking to play this long angle mm. with this Mamba. But rotating over right over back to A. I think this makes sense. A lot of teams want to attack here. They clearly have some intel already. Things are being broken. But they've given up that forward high ground. That mm -hmm. was what Public Hamster never had to give up because of their anvil. But they have to play this way differently. A lot pokier, a lot further back. And a lot more careful. Yeah. Definitely got to be careful as well. Trying to pick those longer angles against the Mamba. We saw Fixer tear into two different people. And we'll maybe get downed. But it won't be enough to kill him for the most part. They have the Fixer smokes and still have... Plenty of opportunity to fight back through this smoke. They know where he's at. Light him up. And he's going to have to play the retreat here. They were at least able to pick Anvil back up thanks to the Saint Drone. He does manage to get a kill thanks to the Mambo. They're trying to see if they can push in. They get so another aggressive. kill soon after that. They have to play aggressive here because time is not on their side. Will they find another pick? They won't. Instead, one of them gets down. Now we have to deal with worrying about a potential 2v2 or at least a 3v2. They do manage to get another one member remaining on the side of Public Hamsters. As they try and move in, they get... Kills all across the board. The defuse will go towards the side of Elevate. And they will get it again. Still with the timer running down, but they do have that anvil, by the way. I, mm -hmm. I entirely missed it in that first uh, round. I was watching the replay feed when then the picks yeah. were happening, so that, that's all on me. They do still have that. They were able to hold that space, and it helped them retake it too, right? Because by going up there and putting that down and really pushing them in past that point, I think that was mm -hmm. uh, the ideal for them, obviously, being able to, to really force them away from that high ground where they were. But now, again, racking up the points. I thought that round would be a, a shoe-in for Elevate with just, again, how much cash they denied. But mm -hmm. now we're looking at, at a gun round. Our primaries are bought up. It will be consistent here for the rest of this half and game. By this point, we'll see where they 
decide to go on their defense, and they are pivoting, it looks like, on Elevate, and it might be a good read. Yeah, it seems like right now... Gotcha. They are at least trying to make their way over onto B side, just as you were mentioning before, Kresnik. They are slowly filtering over, realizing that the attack might be on one of their more open sites. They are going to at least down one icy finds ink. And the rest of them have still yet, man, they haven't even planted the bomb yet, but they have made it onto the objective. A C4 will find another kill here. Elevate finding once more another kill that they can make usage of. Plants down the barricade as well. St. Drone goes out, tries to see if they can pick him up, but it seems like Icy is going to be taken apart. Now this is a 2v3 for the most part. 3v3 actually, one of them does manage to get picked up, but they down two more. That is going to be the wow. round for Public Hamster. What a turn. What an absolute turn. Yeah, that was a, a big flip from them there. So able to, again, find that opening, be aggressive. It worked for them exceptionally well mm -hmm. on their defense and being able to, to find that opening on attack, I think, helps quite a bit. I, I see us holding down the fort for Elevate. I mean, we'll, we'll look at the scoreboard and what could be our last round, potentially, of this if the hamsters can repeat what they have been successful with already here. But I, I want to see where this anvil goes again. I really think that shield placement is super key. And maybe they realize that they just don't want to push A with that anvil being able to put that shield down there. If, if he rotates over towards... If they rotate over towards B, then maybe they can't really find as good of a lockdown angle because that, that high ground is, is so key, I think, to attacking th this A site that you, you really need to, to contest it. And you can already see... Delena trying to do that, and I'm happy that the, sh the scope shaking is still <laughs> happening even on land. Land nerves are real, people, and you can see it right there. <laughs> Trying to see if they can push in. The barricade does get dropped. They are at least able to retreat, lighting it up, if anything, but not quite able to make it in. Delena does manage to find one. Delena finds a second. That's that fixer coming into play here. The Oof. increased duration. He's running them down. That's another Delena with three. They managed to pick one up, but they've already lost two pr practically. They get another kill, but that's so much space created. They are able to plant the bomb down now. Doesn't even matter about anything else, right? Delena managed to down three different people, manages to only get one. The second one is probably getting picked up by now. He is, but that's so much space created off of the back of one person. That's huge. Yeah, the post plant here might be difficult, especially. I mean, they did get rid of Delena. If Delena doesn't chase that last kill, then I think this is almost a shoe-in round for hamsters. Yeah, absolutely. If he plays patiently and kind of waits for them. But now, uh, now Elevate has a chance to clear. They have everybody up top, and they are getting all of that information from Gronky right now as they drop down. The timing from Inky oh, Gronky finding the next. Good timing. And that is the end of map number one eight. Strong performance by Hamsters. I mean, mm. Elevate found their footing at, at some point as soon as they we hit that middle point of the game. But again, once those guns were back in the hands of the Hamsters, I it was very hard for Elevate to answer. Absolutely, yeah. I think that made it that much more dangerous for them to have to fight back against, mm -hmm. honestly. I mean, like, once again, the, the, the rounds kept going on, and it seemed like Elevate were slowly climbing their way back up, but public hamsters are the ones that end up taking this one i'm super super impressed honestly because of the play and the adaptation i mentioned before mm -hmm. you know like there's only like really like one round for leeway right one round that you have to be concerned about if if you are on if the sides are now swapped and elevate did their thing they definitely made sure that they were at least able to close the gap even if it was only a little bit not going to be able to take the first game though and this was the aggression when i mentioned before the previous half and the latter half of the previous half you know like we got there, right? This is exactly what it was that I was talking about. When they felt more comfortable, you could tell that they were. And that's exactly the type of aggression it is that we were seeing a lot earlier. Just mainly, I mean, hey, that's that's character diff. Like, that's rogue diff. Like, that's literally what you type in chat. Because, like, Dallas couldn't do anything about that. Didn't even matter about the reveal. Yeah, I, I think that aggression was... I, I don't think it's necessarily just the teams being aggressive. I think it comes down a lot to just knowing how to play the map control. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they really were kind of choking them out on the sides and made it really tough. And when I'm talking about talking trash between teams, they are right there. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I mean, look at this stage. This is our first look at it. They could... Not only do they get to eye the trophy the entire time if they want to, but if they want to yell that someone on the other team maybe made a mistake, I don't think they're really going to miss it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I don't think they're going to... They're, they're definitely going to find their ways to smack talk oh. one way or another as once again i think the game is once again being set up making sure that everything is a-ok -okay. but very interesting map i mean like I, I i i mentioned the map specifically because we're literally going right back to it right yep. so i it, it's if there's a time oh. for you to understand what it is that you need to do it's definitely so ooh, color change okay nice. speaking of the trophy <laughs> we got yeah, the spotlight right, yeah. right on it again that is the end goal for everyone here 
that is playing. They want to be, be going home, or at least one of them wants to be going right. home with that trophy, unless they maybe share custody. One of them gets it on the weekends. <laughs> but everyone's there watching as well. We got a cool little player set up. Mm -hmm. They can all kind of catch the games. Listen to the comms too, which might be an interesting mm -hmm. little advantage that you get if you are you know able to listen to game number one. You can hear how they talk and maybe get an insight into their decision making you wouldn't get otherwise. Yeah, that's also very, and once again, one of the biggest things about land, right, is having like your team, your opposing team right on the other side when they when the emotions are high when when you're talking about a lot of those clutch plays when you're coming down to the wire here there's going to be a lot of situations where you really will hear the other comps right mm -hmm. people are passionate about this and land really does something to people like more like 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 oh, it, yeah. it really it really really does like it's it's always something to be able to see a lot of these guys really come out and really give their a game but in front of a stage like on people like with people watching and like knowing that it's also being streamed and then there's people in front of you and your opponents on the other side like it's it's something you always got to keep you always, something you always got to keep in mind. I always talk about the mm -hmm. mentality of players and how you need to maintain a strong mentality when you're looking at a lot of these tournaments, a lot of these more grander scheme things, and this is the best opportunity to do that, right? Like land oh, yeah. is the best opportunity to really show not only the endurance it is that you have mentally, but also you know mechanically, physically. You being able to play these games for long hours, understanding that one game isn't the end of the world, right? We still mm -hmm. got more opportunities, and since it is a best of three, it makes it easier. Yeah, and this is the start of a very long road today. We're making it all mm -hmm. the way, I think, to some elimination matches uh, in bracket play by by the end of our broadcast day. So they definitely, you, you talked about, you know, playing for long hours. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, really yeah. got to matter here. <laughs> they, they really right. have to be ready for that. This is just the first in a very, very long series of matches. And obviously all the players are hoping to make it as long as possible. Mm -hmm. Regardless of that, so definitely need to be very careful about you know how much energy you're spending how into the adrenaline you get because then you know if you are screaming and shouting and every game is the most exciting game you've ever played by the mm. third match uh you are a husk of a being and, yeah. and you really do not have the energy yeah. that you need to go on here mm. as they're set and, and, and you mentioned that they, they were going right back to the map and i, I think that actually is a really big deal because yeah. I, I think the fact that they got some rounds and that the, there were gunfights and things were being traded and it wasn't necessarily a complete rollover it bodes a little better for them going into the same map because, like, all right, it's a little bit less of a, you know, strategy-focused mm -hmm. mode. Obviously, there are still strategies on King of the Hill, but we can maybe win with better gunny. And going into that, having won some fights, they might be feeling a little better, but they'd probably be feeling even better if they hadn't just lost on the map that right. they're immediately heading back to. You know, it's like heading back to work the next day <laughs> after right. a really bad day. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Elevate's going to have to be ready for. Exactly. And we talk about adaptation as well, right? Like, I mean, that's something it is that people always keep in the back of their mind, right? How well mm -hmm. do these teams adapt to each other? What's the best way to do that? Play on the same map it is that you just lost on, right? Yeah. Like, really show how how much it is that you've learned in a short amount of time because this is literally the best opportunity to do this is in these shorter sets in these best of threes right mm -hmm. and in, in in some cases even maybe even like a best of two like a best of one in, in, in some, some scenarios depending on what competitive game it is that you're looking at there's going to be a lot of times where you really will have to where you really will have to like be like okay i'm understanding i'm adapting i'm i'm, I'm mm -hmm. learning you have a room for error the first game is not at the end of it right you're only out of it once the games are over once yep. the set is over so i'm interested to see their adaptation here and once again i think it's also a great time to also mention the 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 anvil really like i i yeah, I, sure. I, I, I think anvil is actually a great character to actually talk about because of the usage of the barricades we saw how much more utility it is that he has how much more aggressive it is that he can play how much more comfortable he can feel at his own pace knowing that he doesn't have to really rely on literally only one barricade right yeah. it's, it's it's best to be able to have two flexible yeah exactly it just makes you more flexible you're talking about adapting it gives you the chance to actually adapt instead of saying well we have the strat where i put the shield down mm -hmm. and uh if i don't there do that, we lose but, but you know and maybe you lose because <laughs> you don't have a shield somewhere else and that's right. not something you're really willing to try i think it does open things up quite a bit here but as a reminder we said they're going back to breach and we meant it we are heading right back in to breach king of the hill hollows could be map number three if elevate uh, our respawn team and <laughs> we'll be finding that out really <laughs> shortly once we do head in but again you, you we're, we're saying it we're going back in this is just a product of what's going to happen when you have these vetoes mm -hmm. when you you know have the te the teams picking the maps as opposed to the predetermined pools and do, do you think th this has to lean towards public hamster i mean they, they looked so good on that the yeah. last time i know i've seen them be very successful on this map on king of the hill as well i i find it very interesting that 
they they ended up on this map as the last one remaining after they they vetoed all the rest. Yeah, and I think that's what's so interesting as well, right? I mean, once again, like public hamsters, at least in my mindset, I, I do imagine that they have their best foot forward coming into this, right? Because mm -hmm. like we saw how well it is they performed last time, just as you were mentioning, and now we're heading right back on into breach. I mentioned the, adapt the, the, the adaptability because that's important, right? Yes. Like we're talking about a pretty big point deficit during the, for the, for the, during the first game. Now we're heading back into Breach. The same map, same opportunity available to public hamsters to really make this work for them. And it's something it is that you have to keep in mind if you're on Elevate side. And I, I have the map pool. I do want to mention this really quick. It's Favela, for King of the Hill specifically, because that is the mode we're heading to. It is Favela's Windward Breach Factory and Palace. I have all it up. But Breach, uh, we'll, we'll just drop that because Breach is where we're heading right now as they must be loading into game ready for the respawn mode. We're looking at a little bit of chaos, our first mm -hmm. look at, at, at Lan, King of the Hill. And I feel like Lan is always where the teams play more aggressive because the game just, just feels better. I, I want to see a absolutely wild game of respawn here. Yeah, absolutely. And that's something it is that we also, like, I feel like needs to be also be looked at as well as the fact that we're talking about how what Public Hamsters did on demolition but now we're looking at it from a respawn game mode just as you were mentioning before and now things could be a little bit more different we're looking at the scorch we're looking at the lancer the interesting choice to pick anvil on a respawn game mode and that also makes sense as well because once again two barricades that you can really cut off a lot of different angles that you could be attacked from and make it way easier especially when you're trying to lock down a point after point you know it's gonna play land anvil like i played fortnite when it came out initially i'm yeah. just gonna build myself into a little box and, <laughs> yeah, and wait for other people right to come there. to me i'm pretty sure that's exactly <laughs> what we might be seeing here from from skeppy busting out the anvil once again i saw lancer on the on the other side as well i think mm -hmm. just having that aggressive play, having padded steps, all, all, all the flexibility that that Lancer can bring to the table, just so good on King of the Hill, because you can really get you can get away with more fights when you just yeah. always have a loaded gun. It, when your role keeps you in the fight, it, it really pays off, and that's why both teams have brought it out. But we're also seeing a Seeker actually coming out from Elevate, who got a little buff as well. But I, I didn't think it would it would translate to King of the Hill that that effectively. It's a radius buff on, on the bow is reveal, but. Mm -hmm. Good lad feels comfortable enough or, or believes in the value enough to bust out that double reveal comp. Oh yeah, here we are. The intel. Will it be enough to at least dictate or at least reveal how this game might go? Doesn't seem like it's going to be much of the case. Right now, as the game has just started, Lancer is going to pop that quick and quiet, see if they can move right on in. I'm not going to quite find it so far. The reveal is there, but once again, Skeppy makes it onto point and manages to put up that barricade at a good enough time. He's got it. See if he can even make it. Just kind of force back mm. now. Picks is the first one to make it in for now as Delane is just trying to watch these angles. But again, those incense, mm. that's what I talked about. I thought that it w will punish Anvil and Shield. They're not. Anvil will burn and be forced to rotate. Not since I got at least Lancer. I'm trying to see if he can push along the mid angle here. See if she could at least cause something for her team to sort of be utilized here. Not really going to be able to find much. For the most part, Delana is going to find the kill there hey that's exactly what we were talking about we we're talking about that land disrespect talking about that smack talk that's exactly that that's the best thing it is you can do teabag and then look at him like i'm literally across the room yeah it is it really it really hits different when yes. you can do that it stare right <laughs> yeah. into their eyes yeah. in the same room as you it is a very different feeling here as good lad walks in to to pressure out gronky force him to take that respawn and elevate will start racking up a couple of points but Hills already moved. We're at B, and hamsters have that locked down at the moment. You can already see this push. They seem to have forgotten the good lads here, but caught in the corner. Not able to fight Gronk. He does catch him on the way out, courtesy of that Sahara. But Delana now on the roll out. Still contesting him, and good lad maybe wow. over peaks. There's the respawn. Once again, early rotation means that the, the point let lead, the point deficit goes even bigger. Makes it even better for public hamsters in that moment. I see. Does at least manage to take out two, takes out Delana, manages to take out Ink as well. And now here they are on the objective. It's up to them to hold on as best as they can. Barricade goes down. This is exactly the beauty of having that anvil. Having multiple barricades that you have at your disposal means that even on flank, Lancer is going to be less effective. Fight one-on-one -on -one in close quarters around the or around the cover. And it's not going to be able to be one there. He is at least able to trade out the Lancer, his teammate. Does get brought back. Nobody's on the objective, though. It's just him by himself. And so that's actually going to hurt. That that burns out a lot of their talk. 
This team just reminded him. He's honestly, he just got it on a drive-by. He wasn't yeah. even <laughs> looking to commit to that objective at that point. Just forced to walk away. And you can see Icy already trying to hold close. There's just a sliver of him exposed here, and Ink won't be able to stay committed to fight him. But already on top of the objective are the hamsters. You can see Gronky trying to get that, that forward hold over there as well. Icy is showing up so far yeah. for them. There's two downs for Icy. That Lancer, I knew they were going to make a difference, but maybe not this much of a difference. Really keeping Elevate in the game, and now they have control of a pretty powerful hill, but Prosper oh, wow. over aggressive didn't time it right with Icy, and they're forced to disengage. Shall see if they can keep, at least keep the pressure on Icy. Know that he's already low and has the nano smoke available to the Phantom. Obviously, see if they can keep some sort of intel on their side. I see being up and high. He was he just swung that without really being punished. They do manage to down him a little bit later, but Skeppy is in such a good spot. He can't watch from that angle. Now that all the barricades have been broken, you have a lot more open angles you gotta wow. be concerned about. Manages to trade himself out, at least with Delana Prosper. Downs one, gets the kill on the other. Skeppy finds picks, and they manage to get rid of Ink. Now we are talking about the last hill of this round and looking great while doing it. If they lose someone here, this could be huge and definitely puts a damper on their perspective for the next hill. They do manage to get two. Gronky, Delena, huge flank from the anvil is going to be, at least be able to take out a couple more. But still, public hamsters do manage to at least get on the objective. Again. Hamsters have a much better spawn. Yeah. I, they had someone close to the objective, so their, I think their spawn priority was just given that way. They spawned right next to that hill, so they rolled the walk right back in, start racking up the points again. Still no triple digits from either. This is a, a fairly close game in the grand scheme, but it might not look that way with Icy unable to find the flank. I mean, I think Icy was really the difference maker on those last two mm -hmm. hills, but now if he can't get in, then this might just be very difficult for Elevate to break into mm. here, and that half wall is so tough to contest as yeah. Elevate once again get wiped off the map. And I think once again, like, that trade should have happened a little bit faster. I think the biggest thing about that was that he was able to get that down. Anvil tries to push up, but the reinforcement from Lancer was already there, so that makes it even harder to make sure that you can even get a foot onto that objective. Skeppy, Prosper, both of them brought low as good oh. lad is going to be brought low as well. Dallas and Lancer taking more forward positions and Phantom playing in the back. This is a heavy hold on the side of public hamsters right now. I see all the way in the back, not really going to be able to find much anyway. He has to fight his way in, and that's still going to be the round given to public hamsters. That is a 1-0 so far here in the group stages. If a team is able to set up a forward hold on Hill D, I feel like it, it, it just feels unbreakable right. because either way, you're coming down a really long sight line. You're, you're getting funneled into a small area. If they play aggressive like you saw Delena doing on the outside, I think kind of setting up that cross angle with Grunky, you are going to be at a big disadvantage. They can choose their fights on you. You don't know when they're going to peak. You have an inkling of where they're going to be, but it could be from two angles, so it can really kind of catch you off guard and, and punish anyone who's trying to make a play for someone else. You know, they're waiting on Icy to make this flank, but if they both swing at the same time, if they swing early up front, the, the timing has to be perfect, and either of them can just get caught out by the uh, forced information mm -hmm. that you have to give up to them as we're watching these two players flanking each other. Icy revealed early and going to run into Gronky. Oh, Gronky, man. big advantage in that fight. Not even going to finish him off. Just make him have to do it himself as he goes in for a deep flank. Good lad is watching, but Gronky is so deep around there. They don't see him to be ready to fight him. Obviously, didn't have line of sight to him, but they knew he was flanking. He does finally get stopped, but took Good lad with him. Literally had the more passive angle as well. I mean, you really can't ask for a better opportunity other than that. Tries to play into him. Not going to quite find it there. Wins at least the fight on the 1v1 picks. Does get brought down. 20 seconds left. So that will be some good points. Or some good percentage. Afford it to elevate here. They're all going to try and hold it in. Phantom comes over the wall. Almost loses wow. that fight. That would have been crazy. But still, at least they're able to hold on. Ink tries to swing around. Starlet is out a little bit longer. But Ink is going to die on that objective and give himself even more of a point lead. Yeah, they just let him do it. I mean, it makes sense to not wait. Obviously, as soon as it flips, that's when you finish it off. And Hamsters already have control over the second hill. Uh, we'll just look at how they surround it. We'll get some info right here with the Seeker. We got the reveal. We know that they're on the hill. <laughs> I mean, they already knew that, the right? I mean, there's not a ton of info. They know, I guess, what angles they're on, but they can rotate. They get Gronky off it, but we have to see when they actually kind of breach through it and make their hit on sight. You see, they can push in. They at least are able to get a good couple shots on Delena. Prosper Logic is going to go down here. Delena, no HP, but is holding on. Plenty of bullets in the mag. 
is at least going to be able to keep the pressure on them. They're trying to see if they can slowly fade their way in. Ink may take it himself out, but that doesn't even matter. There's so much stagger on the side of Elevate. It's going to be hard for them to play together to, to take that kill. It took them so long for them to get that kill on Gronky. And Delana is actually going to be able to get the kill still because of that passive. Because of that perk, it is that she's purchased. She got that down. She was able to get her health back. Yeah, the life drain is so good at kind of standing strong and now that Delina has it obviously you're seeing the snowball effect come in Delina mm -hmm. is just unstoppable on this phantom at the moment oh i mean almost didn't get stopped when jumping into a waiting gun earlier you saw how close it's getting here the bounce they takes Ooh. him so low but he hangs on on the very edge oh. that though peeks out gets both in three immediately re just destroyed on the hamster's side cannot get it into this hill, but this is not the easiest hill in the world to hold. I think there's a lot of ways to approach. You can't get as good of a hold on D. They want to get as much as they can out of this and then really have to set up for that, that money hill at the end. Part of the reason why it's not so strong of a hill to hold either is because of the fact that you don't want to reset spawns, especially not on this one. If they try and go around for the flank, it's not going to be good for them. Them having to defend on the backside is going to make it even worse. So that makes it a little bit more dangerous that you have to deal with. Doesn't seem like that's going to matter much, though, because because it seems like public hamsters have been able to make their way back onto the objective very cleanly. With a 122 to 34, it's not looking great. you got to find some sort of way to they fight back. Or they, they, they have to contest because if they don't, they end up losing yeah. the game, Chris Nick. They will if they don't contest. You can see some of them are going in. They're just letting the anvil go. For, I think we were watching the anvil. I think it was just a tough field right, to get the yeah. full view on. All they have to do is contest, and they've done that. They've gotten a few seconds away. They might get it down, but Skippy pushed. No. Uh, interesting choice. I mean, he had his stuff down. Maybe their respawns will be set there because of where he was playing before, but no. They'll respawn on the other side of the A hill. No one has this hill yet, but you can already see they have the high ground coming from that seaside, so they have that covering fire. They trade one for one, but they are going to rack up the time, and I don't... Elvik can't make it in. Good lad has three seconds to make it in right now. I don't even think he can. He can't. He stalled himself out trying to push around that corner. Not going to be able to be there, and instead they have a barricade to work with. That's going to be a very quick and clean 2-0 on the side of public hamsters. I wasn't expecting Skeppy to push up mm -hmm. there. I, 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 I was just assuming that they would just be worried about the trade or whatever the case was, right? They could actually be more so concerned about making sure they put down that barricade, keep the lockdown on the site, and then just play time from there. I think that was a little bit of a over trusting the call. Yes. I, I, I what I think yeah. that was was they were they were fighting Sea Hill. Someone said, "Oh my God, they're crushed. Go! Can you put? Can you pinch?" <laughs> and then he walked out, and then was on low ground against a healthy team right. and died. I, I, I'm almost. Uh, I've been in these situations before. That's probably pretty close to exactly how it happened. Skeppy mm -hmm. was there, had the shield, at the APS. He was setting up home. He was he was getting nice and toasty by the fire, but but had to walk out to go for that because he felt like that was what was going to get his team the win. Do I think that if he stayed there, it would have changed the, the course of that game? Maybe not. Mm -hmm. But either way, Elevate have a bit of time to think about this one as they are playing the third game of the group stage. And I think Hamsters are, are, are up again next, kind mm -hmm. of going off of this, the momentum from this win. Yeah, trying to see if they can find not only their footing here and elevate when they play a little bit later on in the group stages, but also making sure that Public Hamster keep their mind and their wits about them. Obviously, the momentum from this game will feel pretty good. I mean, first win on land, so you're feeling comfortable, feeling good about how that game went. Now there's going to be more time for you to think about it and just be prepared for the next game to come through. Anvil being a character that we've seen picked mm -hmm. very consistently today, something that is very, very powerful. Something it is that I have really, really been interested in seeing, and it turns out it just works, right? Like, it's some, it's a character that is, that's been picked more consistently. I don't think it's the character to pick on a respawn game mode, but I do understand their mindset for the grab. Yeah, I think you want to play those, maybe more mobile rogues or the rogues that can, again, mm -hmm. snowball more potentially. Of course, I, I, didn't, right. I didn't hate the Seeker as it went on, but I really right, think yeah. a lot of the information they got, since they were always outside, you know, on the outside looking in, it really was getting all right they're on site we know right. we, we know that we right, know yeah. they're on site exactly. they, 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 i don't think they will really get away with as mm. much with that because they didn't have the utility to flush people out of those areas right exactly i mean we saw like seeker get the intel and then of course he tries to utilize the bounce mm -hmm. nade as best as he can doesn't find anybody and so now it's like well now what do we do right like it's like the, the util goes out it doesn't find the mark doesn't hit the mark and so then they have to worry about taking a more aggressive angle or they have to worry about being a little bit more front forward or front facing with how they have to try and take site right didn't end up going too well for them, but still something it is that they have to keep in mind for the next one. Yeah, of, of course. They definitely mm. want to consider that. They have plenty of time to do it, though. Again, they'll maybe think about their vetoes as, as well. Right. If, they, if they're not feeling as confident on Breach, they could 
didn't take their time to figure out how they want to do it again, map two, it will still be... The game two will still be the hamsters up there against final chapter. Mm -hmm. Should be setting up there and elevate waiting to play against chapter number three. Just seeing who gets out of this group with the highest seeding. And obviously you want to be seated as, as well as possible. You right. have the best chance to stay out of that elimination mm -hmm. side of the bracket as long as you can. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, once again, that's something it is that you have to keep in mind as well. The more situations it is that you have to be able to make sure that you can move forward in the objective or at least in the tournament, mm -hmm. the better chance it is that you'll feel mentally, right? You're in that elimination bracket. It's going to be a lot harder on your mental to really be concerned about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I definitely don't want to be there, obviously, when the pressure's on. But unless you play better under pressure, you know, some teams right. just want to make that, that elimination bracket run right all right, the way yeah. through. But you don't want to have that advantage as mm -hmm. long as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually didn't get to finish my thought. I'm going to pull out my, my handy-dandy notebook here that I wrote <laughs> down the, the map pools in. Mm -hmm. And we, we were talking about the maps that how did mm -hmm. they get to Breach in the first place? They weren't feeling as comfortable about Favela's, Windward Breach, Factory Palace. Those are the choices that they have for Koth in set number two, ch final chapter versus Public Hamsters right on the other side of this break.